So you can see we have this data set here. It's an HR data set that came from this Mr. Excel forum thread. This person was asking how to calculate the number of rows containing any colored cells. And the forum goes on to people respond by saying a bunch of things. The poster talks about how certain cells are colored yellow if the data is unpopulated, things are colored orange if there's multiple recruiters assigned, and then he goes on to post an actual screenshot of the data set, which I copied and pasted over into this Google Sheet. And you can see the columns are basically related to uh, hiring candidates, and there's about 50 or some rows. And I'm going to just move this below down here. Now the key thing, the key question is how do I count the number of cells in column B where there is a formatting of a yellow, a green, a blue. And so the first method is to filter this column based on a color, which is pretty simple. You just go to, let's click on the first row, data, create a filter. And then I'm going to click on this drop down here and say filter by color, fill color to yellow. So I filter down, there's three rows that contain yellow background in the in column B, but how do I actually count the number of rows that result in this? If let's say there were like 500 rows, I don't want to manually count that obviously. And so you might be tempted to write equals count A, and it counts from B2 to B50. If I hit enter, it gives me the number 49. And what this count date does actually counts everything, even the filtered out rows, which is not what we want. We just want to get the number three. So instead of using count A, you can use the subtotal formula and then put the number three for the function code. The function code is a, a number that you can basically give the subtotal function and one is for average, two is for count, three is count A. And so the subtotal function kind of does what it sounds like it just takes a subtotal of the selected cells, but it actually takes into account the filter. So if I do account a function code three, and then I select my cells above, actually I can do B2 to B50 again, to B50, it'll give me the number three, which is the right number of rows that have a background color of yellow in column B. If I change this now to uh, filter this by a different color, let's say to green. You notice how that subtotal thing goes away, and that's because by having that subtotal formula in column B right below your data set, it gets filtered out because that subtotal cell itself, this one right here, also has a background color of nothing in this case. So what I like to do is I just like to remove, I like to put the subtotal somewhere down here, subtotal three, and then B2 to B50. And then if I change this to be, let's say, to a green, this will stay put here. If I change this to a scion, this will stay put here, and it'll automatically dynamically change based on what you filter, what color you filter on by there. Now the hard part about this solution, this method is that if you wanna update your data set, you have to click on this filter again, remove the filter, and let's say I want to color this cell to be yellow. I can, let's see here, click on that, click on this to be yellow. And now if I, if I want to recount the number of yellow cells in column B, I have to go back to the filter, filter by color, fill color, yellow, and now you can see it increased to four. So it's kind of annoying to have to bounce back and forth between fill color and the, the none to unfilter your data set when you want to update your column of data. Method two builds on top of method one, where instead of having to click on this filter over and over again, you can create a filtered view, which makes it a little easier, in my opinion, to create, to move between the filtered and unfiltered states. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to click on data, filter views, create new filter view. I'm gonna rename this filter view to be called the yellow formatted cells. And I'm going to then click on the drop down and job ref ID column, sort by color, fill color to yellow. And I'm not sure why this did not, oh, let's go back here. I don't think it actually worked. Fill color yellow, there we go. And this is my filter view. 
Now, if I close this, this just goes back to my unfiltered view state. So if I want to go back to yellow, I just have to go to data, filter views, and then this yellow formatted cells is the new filtered view I created. And it will quickly let me, sh let me see the data associated with that specific filter. If I want to update the filter, or if I want to update my source data, again, it's kind of annoying to have to go here, say none, and then click on a cell, then update it to let's say yellow again, go back to data, then go to filter views, and then go back to yellow formatted cells. You notice how this increased to five. So the filter view is a way to make it a little easier to move between the filtered and unfiltered state, I think, but it does still require a lot of clicking around and unfiltering and filtering your data set. Now, option three, I'm just gonna remove all my filters and also remove my filter views. Now, option three is to use a macro. So I'm gonna delete these rows for now. And this macro is here in this gist. Um, this is free to use. You can copy and paste this into Google Apps Script. A macro is a little more advanced use case for Google Sheets, but you can copy and paste this whole thing and then go to extensions, app script, and you should see something that looks like this. And I'm going to say, okay. And this is the same script copied and pasted into Google Apps Script. And the few things you have to keep in mind here, the two variables you have to change are var output number of formatted cells and cell with format to count. The first variable is which cell you want to output the number of formatted cells to. In this case, it's C52. If I go back to my spreadsheet, C52 is simply down here. Whoop. Sometimes my, let me refresh my Google Sheet. Sometimes the Google Sheet rows gets a little messed up. If I go to C52, notice how I call this number of formatted cells. C52 is right here. And I'm actually going to, oh, where did my app script go? Let's go back to my app script. I'm actually going to remove, actually, we can keep it like this for now. If I, now I can select all my cells here in column B. And if I scroll down, I'm gonna to look to see what happens in C52. I'm gonna write, click on extensions, macros, count formatted cells, and Google Sheets will, the macro basically count the number of cells here in column B with any type of formatting and then put it into cell C52 because that's what I specified right here. Now, if you want to count a specific color, number of occurrences for a specific color, you can define that in this row seven var cell with format to count. Notice how it says C53. If I go back to C53, which is right here, let's say I only wanna count the yellow background cells, uh, the cells with the background color of yellow. In this cell, I would click on a background color of yellow. And what this variable does is it tells Google Sheets to look at the color in C53 and then count that in my selection. So if I select all of these cells right here again, and I write, go to extensions, macros, count formatted cells, it only gives me five because there's only, there's only, there's only five yellow cells. Let's say I change this to green. There should be one, two, three, four, five, six green cells here. So if I run this macro again, after selecting all of column B, extensions, macros, complemented cells, it gives me the number six. If I update this to be a green and select all of column B again, extensions, macros, complement cells, goes to seven. The benefits of using the macro is that it's simple to use. You can also assign a keyboard shortcut to this macro so that you don't have to constantly go through the extensions menu then click on count form into cells. You can just click on a, or type in a keyboard shortcut and it'll automatically apply this macro based on whatever data set you selected. 
So typically you might have like a lot of cells here and a lot of columns where there's formatted data and you can select all those cells, run the macro, and then Google Sheets will basically tell you how many times that specific color shows up in your whole selection in your data set. And so these are three methods for counting the number of formatted or colored cells within your Google Sheet.